Happy Sunday, everybody. So for today's workout, we have a 10-minute AMRAP. It starts off with one rep of deadlifts and V-sits. Then you do two reps of deadlifts, V-sits, three and four and five and so on until your 10 minutes expires. So we do want you guys to be moving at a pretty high pace for this one. You know, it's a 10-minute workout. Uh, you're going to want to keep moving on it. Uh, the deadlifts are going to be pick a weight where you think you can probably make it all the way up to let's say the tens before you have to actually break it up. So you want to pick a weight that's um, challenging for about 10-ish reps um, to keep that intensity where you want it to be for today's workout. For the V-sits, some of you guys might have to scale it back so you can go down to a sit-up, you can go to a jackknife or you can go to a V-sit. If you guys are more advanced and you have a pull-up bar at home, you can even do toes to bars there. So uh, the first, call it five or six rounds of this, you're going to be moving pretty quick unbroken. At that point, you start, after that point, you start getting a little bit more challenged. As you near closer to that 10 rep range or 9 rep round, that's where you're going to start losing it a little bit. So keep that in mind for today's workout. It's a core buster for sure. you got the front and the back working with the deadlifts and v-sits um, and it's going to wear on you eventually just keep it at a higher pace if possible for our afterburner today we are going to attach a youtube link um, below this video for you guys to follow um, it's a cool little flow that we found that adds a little bit of mobility a little bit of stretching different kinds of movement you're turning your joints in a little bit different ways it's all body weight it's kind of fun a little bit like yoga maybe just a little bit more flowing in it and a little bit more twisting and turning and things like that it's interesting have fun with it today we will see you guys shortly for the warm-up all right, we're here for the warm up. So we're gonna start off with part A, which is getting that hip uh, and the glutes nice and active. Uh, so starting off with those hip circles, we're gonna keep it a little bit different this time. We're gonna go from the hollow position and keep those circles a little bit smaller. We're trying to work on moving that hip in a controlled fashion. So to get into that hollow first, guys, um, so you guys can start from that pike position, that seated position here. You guys are gonna round that back tuck in that rib cage so you're getting that core engagement and sit back into that hollow position. Once you're here, we're going to focus on one leg. We're going to go for five nice small circles, really just trying to focus on the control of the hip. If it's getting very choppy, make a smaller circle and as you get more comfortable with it, then you guys can get a little bit larger with that circle or even get a little bit faster. I don't want to see you guys go like this. So make sure it's nice and controlled the entire time. Five in the clockwise direction, five in the counterclockwise direction on that one leg, then switch and do it on the opposite side. Once you're done that, you stay on the floor, let's go for those single legged loop bridges. So lift that one leg off the ground, back is flat against the floor, we drive our hips up, really feel that, shape our hamstrings and our glutes. 15 on one side, then once you're done, switch and do 15 on the opposite side. Again, make sure that hip is opening up each time you do it. Once you're done part A, we're gonna go to part B here. So with part B, you're gonna start off with the cardio component. Um, six, 60 double unders, 20 calories, or 400 meter run here. Or if you guys have a pull, jump in that pool, go for a quick little swim. Um, once you're done that cardio component, we're gonna go for part two, or sorry, the second movement, which is eight seated leg lifts over an object, so you're going to get that core nice and active and that uh, hip flexor active, so just pick any object, don't pick an uh, object that's too tall, start with a basic object and then you can get a little bit higher. We're going to focus on that one leg at first, um, so we've done those leg lifts before with both legs and sometimes it's single leg, this time I'm going to go over top of an object, so start with one leg, you're going to keep that core nice and tight, you're going to lift that leg over the object and then back in again. So we're going to go for eight reps. Once you're done eight reps, switch and do it on the opposite side. Again, to make it harder, bring your hands in. To make it easier, hands further back. So play around with it. Uh, what the focus is to get that core engagement and the hip uh, engagement there. Last movement here, 20 seconds of that single arm plank. 
So we're gonna go off of one hand. Um, what I wanna see is that I want you to push through that lat into the ground. Really try to engage that lat and the core as well at the same time. So I'm in this position. We're gonna start off nice and wide, have a nice wide base. Thinking about pushing hard into the floor, keeping the core tight. 20 seconds here, then 20 seconds on the opposite side. If you want to make it more challenging, bring your feet in. Or if you want to make it a little bit easier, go off your knees. But again, still focus on pushing hard through that lat as you're doing that uh, single arm plank. Two rounds of that, guys, and then we'll see you guys next for the workout movements. A single arm deadlift, we like to place that item in between the feet. So your deadlift width is going to be about where you squat. You can go a little bit wider if you want to get into that sumo stance. That's totally fine as well. And what I want you guys to think about here is we're going to think about that hip hinge. So I'm going to think about pushing that hip back and then drawing my hips down after that. You can see my shin is still perpendicular to the ground. So the difference if I was squatting is my shin would be going a little bit forward. I actually want to push that hip back a little bit, get my hip up in the air a little bit. And then I'm going to hold on to my ottoman. Pushing with the legs, opening with that hip, we're going to push that hip back and then lower the object again with those legs. I want you guys to squeeze your butt at the top, make sure the abs are tight. Sometimes when we squeeze our butt, we tend to over arch. Let's make sure we don't do that. Also notice how my head and neck stay nice and neutral. So when I'm at the bottom of that deadlift, I'm not looking straight, I'm not looking down, but I'm kind of looking just maybe a couple feet out in front of me. I want the top of my head to my tailbone to stay in a nice and straight line. If you guys have the mobility and you find it easier or a different type of challenge perhaps to stick to your normal deadlift position, so feet under that hip, and we're just going to keep that dumbbell or kettlebell outside the stance, it makes it a little bit trickier, but it might be a good challenge for you today to do that as long as you keep that back nice and flat, that's the most important part. The final move is the V-sit. Remember guys, you can challenge yourselves um, with a weight between the heel, or you can do a uh, toe to bar if you have a pull bar at home. So for the V-sit, first progression, you can just do a sit-up. So you can get an ab mat under your back, or a towel, roll up a shirt, whatever. We're just gonna come all the way up and touch the shoes, come back down, you can use your arms. Those are a bit too easy for you for three. It's probably gonna be a bit too easy. You can switch to a jackknife. So in a jackknife, we start off in that hollow body position. The knees come in towards the chest. The V-sit is very similar, except now we're keeping our legs locked out and we're trying to bring our arms overhead and then bring the hands in towards the toes. If you don't touch the toes, that's okay. You're just gonna try to get as close as you can and you're gonna try to keep everything nice and straight. 